Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. I'm gonna be diving into some pretty fascinating stuff, actually. You know, I think this was really gonna make you think. Okay, so on Liang Wenfeng and his company Deep Seek, and especially his 60 Thoughts, and wow, this guy's got some serious ideas about where AI is headed and like what China's role in all of this is gonna be. And say to I, I mean, let's be real, this isn't just like every other tech CEO out there, you know, spouting the same old stuff. Liang's story is different. Deep Seek's doing things differently, and it's causing a lot of people to take notice, like even in Silicon Valley, they're starting to pay attention. So just to give you a little background, Liang didn't come from like the typical Silicon Valley background. You know, he wasn't coding in his parents' basement since he was five or anything like that. He grew up in a rural village in China. His parents were teachers, and he was always a math whiz, like from a young age, a total standout. And he ends up going to Zhejiang University, which is, you know, a top school in China. And you think, okay, this guy's on track for a nice, cushy academic career, right? But nope, he takes a hard left turn and dives headfirst into the world of finance, starts this quantitative finance firm called Phantom. It's a huge success. But then get this, he does another complete 180 and launches DeepSeek and his goal. Nothing less than achieving artificial general intelligence AGI within our lifetime. Now, for those of you who aren't like total AI nerds, AGI is kind of the holy grail of AI research. It's not just about, you know, making a computer that can beat you at chess or write a decent email. It's about creating a machine that can truly think and learn like a human being that can solve problems across a wide range of domains, you know, like yeah. we do. Yeah. And what's really interesting is that Liang is absolutely convinced that this is possible and not in some distant future either. He thinks we can get there within our lifetime. And he believes the key to unlocking AGI lies in language models. His argument is that, like, think about it, human thought is fundamentally a language process, right? We think in words, we communicate through language, so if we can crack the code of language, we might just unlock the secrets of human-level intelligence. I don't know about you, but that's some pretty mind-blowing stuff to me. It makes you wonder, like, is this guy a visionary or is he just way too optimistic? But then you look at what Deep Sea's been able to achieve, and it's hard to dismiss him. Uh, they've been making some serious waves with their work on natural language understanding and code generation. And they're doing it in a way that's really different from most other AI companies out there. They're not just focused on like turning out the next cool app or you know chasing quick profits. They're taking a much more long-term approach. They're prioritizing deep research exploration of new model structures, and they're willing to invest heavily in it, even if it means like higher costs and slower results. And this brings us to another really interesting aspect of Liang's thinking, which is his critique of the Chinese tech scene. He's been pretty vocal about this, saying things like, you know, most Chinese companies are used to following, not innovating. And he's not wrong. So there's been a lot of focus on like adapting existing technologies for the Chinese market, rather than pushing the boundaries and coming up with truly new ideas. And Liang believes that China has the talent and the resources to be a global leader in AI. But what's missing is the mindset, the confidence to break away from that follower mentality. And that's exactly what he's trying to do with DeepSeek. They're trying to create this like mini Silicon Valley within China, but with a focus on deep research and a culture of like true innovation. So like imagine this, a company with no KPIs, no rigid deadlines, just a flat hierarchy where everyone is encouraged to experiment to pursue their own ideas, even if they fail. You know, it's kind of like an academic research lab, but inside a company that's actually producing real world results, and their hiring practices uh, are just as unconventional. They're not just looking for people with like tons of experience. They're looking for passion, curiosity, yeah. that spark that tells you someone is truly driven by the work itself. And they're not afraid to take chances on people. You know, I read this story about how they hired a visually impaired developer and this developer ended up using their API to create a scent navigation app, you know, like navigating the world through smell. It's just amazing to see what happens when you bring together people from diverse backgrounds and give them the freedom to explore their ideas. But it hasn't all been easy for DeepSeek. You know, one of the things you sent over mentioned the challenges they faced because of the ban on high-end chips. And that could have been a, a major setback, especially for a company that relies so heavily on computing power for their research. But they didn't let it stop them. They found ways to optimize their algorithms to get more out of the resources they had to think outside the box. And, you know, sometimes limitations can actually be a good thing. They force you to be more creative, more resourceful. In DeepSeek's case, it seems like it actually made them stronger. And then there's Liang's stance on open source, which is another thing that sets him apart from a lot of other tech leaders. He's a big believer in open source. He sees it as crucial for building a strong tech ecosystem, attracting talent, and fostering collaboration. And this is where things get really interesting, especially in the context of his critique of the Chinese tech scene you know, by openly sharing their work, by contributing to the global pool of knowledge, 
DeepSeek is kind of putting their money where their mouth is. Mm -hmm. They're saying, we're not just going to talk about change. We're going to be the change. But it's a bold move, right? Especially when you consider the concerns around intellectual property theft. But Liang's view is that the value created through open source, the boost innovation it provides outweighs those risks. And it makes you wonder, is this purely altruistic? Or is there also like a strategic element to it? You know, could this open source approach actually help deep seek attract the best talent, build a stronger reputation globally, and even influence the direction of AI development in China? It's a fascinating question and one that I'm still kind of wrestling with myself of what do you think is open source a purely idealistic move or could it be a brilliant business strategy as well? And it's that kind of like unconventional thinking that you see throughout Lang's 60 thoughts, you know, like he, he's not afraid to challenge the status quo. And one of the things that really struck me was his perspective on the whole, you know, China versus US AI race thing. He acknowledges that there is a gap right now, but he doesn't think it's because China lacks talent or resources. He sees it more as like a, a gap in mindset, you know, a difference between original innovation and what he calls imitation. He uses the example of NVIDIA, you know, the chip maker. They're like the dominant force in AI hardware right now. And Liang argues that their success isn't just because of like one company's brilliance, it's because of this whole ecosystem that's been built up over time by you know the entire Western tech community. And he seems to be saying that China needs to develop that same kind of ecosystem. Mm. You know, one that fosters collaboration and knowledge sharing and a long-term vision for AI development, not just like chasing the latest trend or quick profit. Huh. Which brings us back to his emphasis on open source, right? Like by contributing to open source projects, Chinese companies can move from being just uh, consumers of technology to becoming active participants, you know, shaping the global AI landscape. It's, it's a bold vision for sure, like challenging the Chinese tech industry to step up and play a bigger role on the world stage. But it also makes you wonder about the potential pitfalls. You know, can a country that's known for its tight control over information and its focus on national interests truly embrace that open collaborative spirit of open source? It's a tension that Liang acknowledges, but he seems to believe that the benefits ultimately outweigh the risks. And then there's his whole perspective on the future of AI. You know, he's not just talking about like incremental improvements. He's talking about AGI becoming a reality. And I know some people think that's still science fiction, but Ling is convinced it's going to happen probably sooner than we think. He lays out his reasoning and it's pretty compelling. You know, he mm. sees the rapid advancements in areas like natural language processing and robotics as like stepping stones, you know, indicators that we're moving in the right direction. He believes that with continued investment, a focus on fundamental research and that collaborative spirit he keeps emphasizing AGI could become a reality within our lifetime. And he even gets into specifics, you know, talking about areas that DeepSeek is exploring like mathematics and code, multimodality, you know, AI that can process information from multiple sources like text images, sounds, and of course, that core focus on natural language itself, so that's just like a vague hope for a sci-fi future. It's a clear roadmap, a strategy for making AGI happen. But here's where things get really interesting and maybe a little unsettling. You know, what does a world with AGI actually look like? What are the implications for society, for the economy, for our very understanding of what it means to be human? These are questions that Liang doesn't shy away from. He talks about the need to approach AGI development responsibly, ethically, with a focus on human well-being. He sees AI not as a threat, but as a tool, one that can help us solve some of the world's most pressing problems, you know, like climate change, poverty, disease. It's a vision that's both inspiring and daunting, you know, a glimpse into a future that could be profoundly different from the world we know today. But even with all this focus on the future, Liang doesn't lose sight of the human element, you know, the importance of nurturing talent, creating an environment where people can thrive and do their best work. And this is where his critique of traditional business models comes back into play. He's not a fan of that whole pressure to generate short-term profits, you know, the rel relentless pursuit of the next quarterly earnings report. He sees that as stifling to true innovation, a distraction from the long-term vision needed to achieve something like AGI. Instead, he advocates for a more patient, deliberate approach, one that prioritizes fundamental research, even if it's expensive and inefficient in the short run. He believes that true innovation often comes with waste, with setbacks, with the need to iterate and learn from mistakes. This is not a linear path. It's a messy, sometimes chaotic process that requires a certain level of faith, a belief in the power of human ingenuity to eventually overcome the obstacles. And that faith extends to his belief in the potential of young talent. You know, those who are just starting their careers unburdened by the baggage of old ways of thinking. He talks about deep sea hiring practices, how they actively seek out fresh graduates, people with peculiar experiences, those who bring diverse perspectives to the table. 
He sees their lack of experience not as a weakness, but as a strength. You know, an opportunity for fresh thinking, for challenging assumptions, for finding new solutions that more seasoned veterans might overlook. He even mentions how Deep Sea deliberately avoids setting KPIs or rigid tasks for their employees. Instead, they focus on giving people ownership of their work, trusting them to find the best solutions. Now, you might be thinking, isn't that a recipe for chaos? How can a company function without clear goals and deadlines? And it's a valid question, you know, one that I'm sure Liang has grappled with himself. But maybe there's something to be said for that kind of radical trust, you know, that belief in the power of intrinsic motivation. Maybe when you create an environment where people are genuinely passionate about their work, where they feel valued and empowered to make a difference. The need for those external motivators fades away. This whole idea of a flat hierarchy hiring for passion over experience, trusting people to do their best work without micromanagement, it's a radical departure from the traditional corporate model. And it makes you wonder, could this be a glimpse into the future of work itself? You know, as AI continues to transform industries and reshape the job market, will we see more companies adopting these kinds of structures, these more human-centric approaches to managing? It's a fascinating question and one that I'm sure will be debated for years to come, but it goes even deeper than just like changing how companies work. You know, Liang talks about this need for a bigger shift in society, like a change in values, moving away from just chasing money all the time and more towards like appreciating knowledge, creativity, you know, the things that come from pushing the boundaries of what we understand as humans. And I got to say that really resonates with me, you know, in, in a world where it feels like everything is about instant gratification, and the next big thing, and you know, measuring success by how much money you make. It's really refreshing to hear someone talking about it more like a thoughtful approach to progress. It reminds us that, you know, real innovation, the kind that actually changes things for the better, often takes time and a willingness to invest in research and a belief in the power of human curiosity to you know, unlock new possibilities. So it all comes back to that question we started with. Can Liang actually pull this off? Can Deep Seek with its like radical way of working and its super ambitious goals, can they actually achieve AGI? Well, I guess only time will tell, but one thing's for sure. Luang Wenfeng is a force to be reckoned with. He's a disruptor, a visionary. And his 60 thoughts give us this really fascinating glimpse into what the future of AI could look like, a future where China could actually be a global leader. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I'm left feeling this sense of like wonder and excitement, you know, like we're standing on the edge of something truly transformative. Lang's ideas have really made me question my own assumptions and they've definitely broadened my understanding of what's possible. And honestly, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the future. What about you? What's stuck with you from Lang's 60 Thoughts? What are you hoping for? What are you worried about when it comes to the future of AI? These are questions worth thinking about, you know, because the future of AI isn't something that's just going to happen to us. It's something we're all going to create together. And I personally can't wait to see where this journey takes us. Thank you.